Welcome back to This is Living in Costa Rica. And we're going to have a good time today if this is your first time here and you're like, who is that strange guy again? I ain't never seen him before. He's got some funky looking glasses on. Anyway, <laughs> hey, uh, if you've never seen me before, I'm Alan and this is my faithful sidekick and beautiful honey. This is Rebecca. So, hey, we're going to have a good time today. But before we get started, you know, real quick at the very beginning, I want to tell you something. Um, you know, it's real important that you take a moment to hit that like button. And I hate to always be asking for likes and subscribes, but I want to tell you why we do that, okay? You know, I've been on the internet for years and years and years, and I understand how algorithms work. And you taking two seconds to actually hit that like button and hitting that subscribe button makes a huge difference for us because what happens is that tells the algorithm that you're liking it and it allows us to share this information with more and more people. So while it only takes you, you know, maybe a few moments to actually do that, you don't realize how huge that actually helps us by doing that, okay? Now, you know, for me, uh, it's not a vanity thing. Yeah, wh would I love to have a million subscribers? Sure, who wouldn't? But really, having a million subscribers and nobody watching uh, means absolutely nothing, okay? But to the algorithm, what it does mean is that, hey, if people are subscribing, if people are liking your content, then they push it up into the search bar and it helps other people. And I guess the big question is, why is it we are trying to help other people? So they don't make the same mistakes we did. <laughs> That's right. I, I made every mistake in the book. And, uh, you know, it, it, making mistakes can be tough. Yeah, and it's not just about making mistakes, though. It's about maybe um, realizing before you come what you're getting into. That's so that right. your expectations aren't like way up here and, you know, because uh, the Internet presents Costa Rica in... Uh, kind of a different light. Well, that's marketing, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, you know, w when you think about Costa Rica, you think paradise, you know. And, and, and it is, it, but it's not without its faults, just like any other country in the world. So we're just trying to right, uh, we're trying bring some to, reality before, you know, so you know what, when you move, what you're potentially, you know, in for. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. So, hey, it's just real, real important. And, you know, I hate to to say because really in reality, and look, I just want to say kudos, man. I mean, we've got almost 7,000 subscribers, but when I look at the analytics, what you don't know is that represents maybe uh, a quarter, less than a quarter of the actual viewers. You know, we actually have over 50, 60,000 people that actually watch the show every single day, every week, but they just don't take the time to subscribe. So I wanted to take a moment to say, hey, it really is just very valuable for us that you hit that sub subscribe button, that you do hit that like button, you know, it, it, it just, it's, when you do that, you're helping other people to get the same information that you want to get. Yeah, and so, it's helping our channel to be successful. Absolutely. And hey, uh, thank you so much for, for the folks that do donate. I, it yes. looks like to me, Dean just uh, donated to the helicopter fund. Thank you so <laughs> much. <laughs> hey, and you know, we really do appreciate it whenever you donate and whenever you join the forum. Because when you join in the forum as a premium member, hey, that's 33 cents a day. I know that's hardly nothing, but it does make a big difference because there are actual expenses you know the the form it's not free you know I have to pay for that you know video equipment video editing all that stuff does cost money and you know we didn't do all this to try to make money it's nice to make money but we do all this you know whether we make anything or not we do it to help you because we you know, I wish I'd have had someone helping, helped us whenever we first came. Would have saved us thousands of dollars. Yes, but it is nice to make money at it as well. It is very <laughs> make nice. Make money doing something that you love to do. How Absolutely. awesome, huh? That's... Greatly, greatly appreciate it. Anytime that you hit that dollar sign and donate or you join as a forum member, we don't take that lightly. It means a lot. It really does. So we greatly, greatly appreciate you. And so we, we dream big. We always <laughs> dream big. I really am believing. Well, I, dream small. Yeah, I really am believing I'm going to have a helicopter because where we're going at, it's very remote. But you know, that takes a lot of money and I just don't quite have that yet. I keep looking like in my wallet and it's like echo, echo, echo. <laughs> but one day it'll be full. So anyway, 
Okay, so what, let's get on to the topic at hand. We're talking about that new proposed law. Man, people have been asking about it. Hadn't heard, hadn't heard, hadn't heard. And it's so exciting to get some feedback. And, you know, I'm hoping, I don't know if we'll hear next week, but supposedly it's already gone to the second debate. Now, like I said in the premiere, I don't fully understand all that. It passed, but, uh, it passed the first debate. Passed the first debate, which then means that the chances of it passing the second debate are huge. Mm -hmm. And obviously, uh, while there's people who are against it, I think there's more who are for it. And uh, I believe Costa Rica is intelligent enough to say, hey, look, you know, with, with just the current state, there's the, I say gringos, the foreigners who are in Costa Rica, they uh, are a, a tribute to $5 million annually. They're spending their money in Costa Rica, and that's a lot of money that helps Costa Rica. So they realize that if they will create this incentive package and it will draw in enough foreigners, more foreigners, right? Because now here's what they realize, okay? Let's be completely and 100% honest. Years ago, Costa Rica had this similar package in place and it drew a lot of people. Well, Costa Rica, laws change, they get greedy, and they say, you know what, we're going to make, uh, you know, we're not going to give them these incentives. Well, they don't give them the incentives and then all of a sudden they don't see nearly as many expats coming because it's too expensive to bring in a container full of stuff. It's too expensive to buy vehicles. And with this whole COVID pandemic, Marcus said it. He says, you know, it's a good thing that this COVID pandemic happened because it caused Costa Rica to say, what can we do to boost the economy? And they immediately started saying, well, you know, expats, uh, foreigners bring in a lot of money. So what can we do to incentivize them? Let's bring in a lot more people. And if we bring them in, common sense says they're going to spend money here. But, you know, they're complaining that it's too expensive uh, to bring in a container. They're complaining the automobiles are too expensive. And, you know, they're spoiled American, spoiled foreigners, and they want to bring in their favorite vehicle from uh, the United States. But it's so expensive. Well, they're making an incentive to say it's going to be super easy to bring in. Well, I can't say more super affordable. easy more affordable. Rebecca's just great with that. She's just like, you know, she went to school and made all A's and uh, I went to English and I made D's. I think D stood for dummy. I'm not sure. Don't talk like that about yourself. <laughs> so anyway, uh, thank you so much, Greg. We greatly, greatly appreciate you. Um, there's an echo coming because... Go, uh, 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 yeah, uh, 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 there's an echo coming from I, the other. I know you never make mistakes. You only thought you did, but that's right. You keep them entertained while I turn the audio off on the computer. So, well, when Costa Rica first started thinking about how to um, bring in some more income into the country, one of the things they thought about was to tax the foreign income, you know, tax the income of people, foreigners living in Costa Rica, tax anything that they earned or were entitled to, you know, income from outside of Costa Rica. That was a, not a good idea, I thought. <laughs> yes, yeah, and you know, and, and so, I don't know that they might not still be thinking about that. Right. But I think this incentive, instead of taxing the people, incentivizing them to come and spend their money uh, would be a whole lot better and would, would last for into the future. Whereas if they tax people, um, those that are looking at countries around the world where to move, they're going to skip over Costa Rica if, you know, they're having to pay taxes on their income in their home country and in Costa Rica. So it's like a double taxation. That's yeah. how it would be for us because of the United States. Now, if you're from a country that already doesn't tax you and you, then you but, just but who would want to go to a new right. country and be taxed? When, so. You know, so, you know, it's important to understand and take all those things into consideration. So just the fact that they were thinking about and might possibly still go to a worldwide tax system, this incentive specifically states that they will not tax income that is created outside of Costa Rica. They are still going to tax you if you have investment properties and those investment properties are rentals. They're still going to tax you on that. That's their territorial tax. And if you make money in Costa Rica, 
you're going to pay tax on that, okay? So that's just important to note. But hey, I, I don't mind paying tax um, in a country that I live in. We pay you know, tax on all our groceries and everything else. I just don't, it doesn't make sense to me get, paying double tax, right? Right, right. Uh, we certainly don't mind paying taxes. That's how you support the country that you're in. And like Alan was saying, we do pay taxes on anything that we buy and on our vehicles that we have to get licensed and um, what else we, the insurance, well, there's all of those things. Practically taxes on everything and used to, there wasn't that 13% tax, but you know, uh, and while everybody hates a new tax, well, the fact is that Costa Rica is seriously, seriously in debt and they have to do something to try to get rid of this debt. Okay. And that 13% tax was one of them. Now, are there a lot more things they can do? Absolutely. Am I going to focus on what they can do? No, I'm going to focus on what they are doing. And the thing that they are doing is pretty stinking awesome because it's going to really help you. So, hey, let's, you know, let's uh, real quick. Let me just talk about those five things real fast, just in, uh, or six things and we'll name them real quick. But then I want to go over some of these questions right here. So, you know, obviously, you know, we just talked about them in the premiere, but for the people that just joined us and missed out on the premiere, uh, let's quickly scan over those things real fast. So let me open up my notes here, okay? So just so that you know, real fast, you know, number one, and I saw the question in there, yes, indeed. If you, if you want to, to become a resident in the investor category, so there's lots of categories. The three most popular categories are? The investor the rentista and the pensionado. Okay, and so the pensionado, those are the retirees. Those are the most People common, most popular. <laughs> There's pensionados, hence yeah. the word pensions, okay? They're actually getting a check from anywhere in the world as long as they got a retirement check and it's at least a thousand bucks, they can qualify for that category, okay? Now, for the, um, for the uh, investors, well, then you have to invest money into Costa Rica. There are several ways to do that, okay? But the most popular is people would buy a piece of property, automobile, several things, $200,000, and they are talking about dropping it to one hundred and fifty. dollars Woohoo, that's cool. That's going to make it uh, more affordable for more people. And look, properties are for sale everywhere. So if you find a property and it's $200,000 and you really like it, I can almost guarantee you offer one hundred and fifty, dollars they will take it because everything is for sale. It is a buyer's market, okay? So that's, that, that's just great news. Number two, which is even uh, greater news to me, is the tax-free importation of vehicles. And that's up to two vehicles. So, you know, I am so excited that you guys are donating because not only can I bring in my car, but I can't wait to get a helicopter. Yay! <laughs> you know, um, I, we want to be in a very, very remote area, so it would be cool to have one. Yeah, one of these days I'll have one, I hope. <laughs> anyway, so you can bring in two vehicles, but it's important to note you can't sell that vehicle. But if something happens, you know, you it gets sell stolen. It after a period of time. Yeah, after a period of time, and I don't know what that time frame is. We'll update you more. Yeah, I think they're aiming at five years. Yeah. And they're doing that to prevent the fraud, you know, prevent people from um, bringing in vehicles and undercutting, you know, selling. Right, so. right. So, uh, and of course, number three, we talked about money earned abroad is not going to be taxed. Number four, 20% savings on the total transfer tax fee. And keep in mind, you know, if you buy a house for a million dollars, it's not, you're not saving 20% of that million. What you're doing is you're, the transfer, the transfer fee is only 1.5% of whatever you bought. So if you bought a million dollar home, 1.5% would be oh, uh, um, a million, maybe one point, I mean, maybe maybe 150,000. I don't know. I could be way off. I was good in math, but you're, uh, whoops, I hit the camera. Anyway, uh, and you'd be I'm saving 20%. I need my calculator. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. Move the decimal. <laughs> and then number five, there is a one-time exemption on importing household goods. Now that one is probably the most important one of everything because, you know, we, we like our own things and, you know, we can buy quality and, hey, it's really not all Costa Rica's fault. It's very difficult to find quality in Costa Rica. And uh, it's a challenge. And so, hey, I've got a bunch of stuff, personal things. I've got uh, furniture that really means something to me that I bought when I was in Japan and when I was in the Marine Corps. Stuff that's irreplaceable. I want to bring it here. We've been paying for storage since we've been here. That's over seven years. And I can't wait to bring a container here for right. all of our stuff. 
because when we say we sold everything, we sold uh, all of our furniture and uh, you know appliances and things like that, except for the things that were sentimental or irreplaceable, like your furniture from Japan. So. Yeah. So anyway, and then of course you know the the last one here, number six, is specialized expedited processing window. Uh, which is the number one reason the migrations de department is against this is because that's going to cause them to do more work. And uh, Costa Rica is just really pura vida. And in my opinion, that's just my opinion, okay? My opinion, the reason it stinking takes 18 months to two years to get your residency is pura vida. I approved one person today. I, okay, I don't know. That's just my opinion. No one's in a hurry, but, you know, it, it, things move a lot slower in Costa Rica. Yeah. And that can be nice because, uh, especially if you're trying to get out of the rat race, you know, it's nice at times for things to be slow. But when you're waiting on something like a residency, <laughs> that can be frustrating. Uh, and I think uh, not only will it cause more work for them because more people will be applying, but it'll cause them to have to move faster. <laughs> They'll have to work at it yeah, faster. Yeah, they would, you know, and they're not used to working fast. And I understand, look, you know... Um, we didn't leave the United States because of the rat race or anything like that. One day we're going to share our personal stories to why we actually did leave the United States. And it was all for great things, okay? Yeah. I think it's not that we left the United States. We came to Costa Rica. Yeah, we didn't leave the United States. The We've United got family, <laughs> friends, enjoy the United States, love the United States. But, uh, you know, it's usually me. I'm ready to go for an adventure. And then one day, you know, uh, Rebecca's like, why don't we go to Costa Rica? And I'm like, what? <laughs> You want to do what? I'm like, I'm having fun on my dirt bike in Las Vegas, and I'm jumping through hills and canyons. You want to go to Costa Rica? Really? You know? Anyway, long story short, here we are and having a blast. Okay? So, anyway, it's her fault. That's right. It's her fault. So, anyway. I accept responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, let me go through some of these questions here, because I want to answer your questions. And you know what? Before I answer those questions, well, no, I guess, no, let me share with you what we plan on doing if and when this law is passed, okay? So <clears throat> we've been uh, storing up our stuff in a storage unit for a long time, <clears throat> waiting for the day that we could bring our stuff here. Now, as soon as this thing does pass, obviously we can't bring that container here until we actually qualify for our residency. Our residency process has is, is been ongoing for about four years now. Uh, it's a long process. Um, anyway, I won't get into all that. But when we finally get approved for residency, which I hope will be soon because we have an appointment with the residency next month in July. So anyway, when we finally do get approved, then we're going to uh, find out, okay, the details. When can I get that container? And so as soon as we can transport that container, we will. Now, here's what I understand, okay? But it's only my understanding and I could understand wrong. I can go ahead and get that vehicle. I can go ahead and get uh, that container. And as soon as, I, as soon as I start the residency process, I can go ahead, bring my container. Go ahead, bring my vehicle. However, if for some reason... I get disqualified. I lied on my application. I did something wrong. I got in trouble. For some crazy reason, I just was disqualified from residency. Guess what I get? I get to pay all of the taxes, all of the import fees, all of the, the things for bringing that stuff over. As long as I'm able to get uh, residency, then I don't have to pay, okay? So from my understanding, that is the process. But I could be wrong, so we try to give you accurate information. Just don't hold me to it. You're talking about that would be the process once this law is passed? Once that law is right. passed. So let's clarify, because right now, you don't have to be a resident to bring your stuff over. I mean, you could bring it with you when you when you move if you wanted to. Um, oh, yeah, you, know, you can bring your stuff anytime so you want. Yeah, so it's not that you have to be a resident to bring your stuff over. It's just that um, in order to take advantage of this new law. Incentives inc of it being tax-free, duty-free, import-free, you know. Well, once that law is passed, you get to save thousands upon thousands of dollars. I mean, we know people that, you know, obviously, if you got a lot of money, that's great. Money solves a multitude of issues, and you don't want to wait. And so here's the thing is, if you buy a brand new vehicle that costs you $60,000, 
well, the import fees on it, you almost pay for it again. I think you end up paying about half of that price. So you paid 60,000 brand new vehicle, you end up paying another 30 for import fees. Now that same vehicle is like $90,000. And of course, you mentioned that um, Costa Rica has their own valuation um, scale or whatever, you know, their own valuation information. Yeah. So that's why it's very important to go watch that first video because that first video I go into detail and I, and I give actual examples and I show you uh, some of these actual import fees. Okay. Uh, so that's very important. So anyway, uh, I'm going to go through here and oh, I was saying I got on a rabbit trail. What we're going to do is once this thing is passed and once we get approved for residency, because once it's passed, you can't do anything until you get approved for residency. Once you get approved for residency, I'm going to immediately have that container shipped over. And when, when I get enough money, <laughs> then I'm going to buy the vehicle of my choice. I will probably buy a Ford 250. I used to have a Ford 350, big old dually. I loved it, but it's not really practical to have a dually in Costa Rica. It's really not necessary, and a lot of the roads are very narrow. So, uh, but having a good strong Ford 250 that's got a very strong motor and is able, you know, four wheel drive, able to get up the mountains and go where we're going would be very, very beneficial. That's my plan, but obviously money solves a multitude of issues. I ain't getting no new F-250 if I ain't got no money, folks. So that's the way it goes. So right. anyway. And we're not waiting on our residency to, uh, to bring our stuff over. It's just with the, the way the import tax and duty free fees right now, it's just too expensive. It's just not cost it's not, prohibited. I mean, yeah, cost, you know, it's just, <laughs> yeah, it's not advisable. <laughs> It, uh, right, it's not anything that we need right now. You yeah. know, it's just sentimental things. Yeah, it's just so sentimental it's, things, photo albums, stuff like that you can't replace, okay? So, and, uh, so let me, let, let's start looking at some of these questions here. So Liz says, so if you go and apply for residency right now, but don't become a resident for years after applying, does it mean you still can't get the benefits until you're approved. No. From my understanding, Liz, is that let's, let's just, to make this thing easy, let's say that the bill passed yesterday, okay? Woohoo! it passed yesterday. Your first step is actually to apply for residency, and when you apply for residency, then uh, you start the whole residency paperwork, okay? You uh, start that residency paperwork, and you get something that's called a golden ticket. And that golden ticket just simply says that you don't have to stamp out because you're applying for residency, okay? I won't go into all the details on that, but I think at that point you can go ahead and you can start bringing your container over, you can bring your vehicles over, and you know, you still got like 18 months to two years before you get approved, okay? But once you get approved, then um, you're good, okay? Now, if for some reason you don't get approved, then you're gonna have to pay uh, all those fees that you would have paid if you, you know, would have paid, you know, prior to the law is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so I hope that clarified for you. Well, Liz, actually, okay? you would, if you're saying that the law, you she would have to pay. Yeah, she would have to pay. You would have to. Yeah, she would have to pay, pay the normal import duties for a vehicle, the normal import duties for your household right. goods, Anybody and stuff like that. Anybody that's not a resident, the the fees that someone who is not a resident would have to pay. Yeah. But it does take a while. Hey, but you know, I'm, I'm believing and hoping that they're going to actually have the expedited window that's going to push us through a little bit quicker. That would really be nice. Okay. But uh, we don't know what's going to happen, right? We're still waiting. Okay. And we'll give you an update. Now, uh, now uh, Annette has a good question. She says, so in other words, I wonder if this is going to have a significant effect on the real estate inventory in the near future. And personally, I think it will. Uh, this incentive is going to bring or entice a lot of foreigners. And I saw another question, is it just US and Canada? No, it's worldwide. So it doesn't matter where you come from. You can come from Timbuktu, Egypt, and you still qualify, okay? You just can't come from Costa Rica. So it's important that you know that. Uh, if you're coming from anywhere in the world, and coming to live in Costa Rica, then once you get, you know, once you start applying for residency, then you'll be able to take advantage of those incentives. I think it's going to end up drawing more and more people here, which means if they come here, what are they going to do? 
they're going to immediately start buying properties. And so what they're going to do, they're going to immediately start buying properties. That's $150,000 or more. And so, yeah, we're going to see the inventory go down. I don't think you have anything to worry about because they're, everything is for sale in Costa Rica. Yeah, and that's only the people applying for the investor category um, that would be buying properties. That's right. You know. That's right. But, you know, now there's still tons of people that are coming here that uh, they're moving to Costa Rica. They are older in age and they have no desire to own a piece of property. They simply want to rent a piece of property and just live out the rest of their years in Costa Rica paradise. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, so... You know, and but, they, they would qualify for residency under the Pensionado. That's right. A lot of people qualify residency under Pensionado. They're not wanting to buy anything. They just simply want to rent somewhere. Okay, yeah. nothing wrong with that at all. Or they may buy something, but it maybe only spend fifty thousand dollars. Well, they don't need to spend the hundred fifty or two hundred thousand like it is now to qualify because their pension. Yeah. Uh, if their pension is over a thousand dollars, that qualifies them. You know, it really just all depends on your comfort level. You know, I know one guy, he stated just the other day uh, publicly that he has a 10 by 10 well-built cabin. Now, 10 by 10, that's not a lot of room. That's a tiny house, but he is happy go lucky as he can be because he has a really nice 10 by 10 cabin. You know, it's next to the river. It's walking distance, all kind of stuff. He's having a blast. And of course, you know, Rebecca and I are just about, uh, we're getting ready to build on our off-grid homestead and share that with you. But the thing that's holding us back is trying to get the internet because it's in a remote area. But I'm hoping to solve that this week. I hope everything takes longer in Costa Rica. So anyway. I find that in Costa Rica, you can live in a smaller space because there's so much to do outdoors. You know, yes. you can do so much outdoor living, whereas... Gosh, in, in the U.S., I wouldn't want to live in a tiny space and be um, confined to that area all winter long, you know. I mean, we sit outside a lot. We work outside a lot. Uh, we can set up our desk outside. Yeah. I mean, if I could be outside all the time, I would be. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, Jonathan asked a really great question. So Jonathan says, well, does this apply to Costa Rica citizens living in the USA? You know, that is a good question, Jonathan. So he's obviously a Tico. He lives in the United States. So would he qualify to have all of his stuff brought over? You know, that is a good question. Yeah. I have no idea. You would have to really talk to Costa Rica to find out. I uh, really don't know. Now, if you were a, if you were a United States citizenship, you know, let's say that you apply to become a United States citizen. I think you would qualify then, okay? But, you know, I just don't know that answer. I wish I did. That's a good question. Okay, but that is a good question. Um, Atiko Soon says, Hello from New York. What about if one is a resident of Costa Rica and planning to ship a container, car, etc.? Are they exempt from these taxes? Oh, okay. I guess I just answered that one, you know. Uh, I, I don't I, know. Actually, yeah. Huh? You actually answered it with, you don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So uh, that's a good question, Tico Soon. I mean, if you're, if you're a Tico in New York, I don't know. So, um, But that'd be something worth Now, Jonathan out. says he is also a USA citizen. So, Jonathan, I would believe uh, that if you are a USA citizen, I believe that you would then indeed qualify, okay? Uh, because you are a United States citizen, I think you would qualify. I don't know that for certain. I'm not an attorney, but I, don't I think if, you would. I don't know if this law is even addressing that. You know, that's one of those areas that maybe they didn't think about. Yeah, know? they probably hadn't thought about that area. So, um, But, of course, we've only seen the highlights of that that law, so no telling what is in detail. Now, uh, Annette did ask a good question. She says, you know, hey, love you guys uh, and uh, really appreciate it, but I wonder how long, you know, whether this incentive would bring enough new investors to shift the real estate market from a buyer's market to a seller's market. Uh, in my opinion, Annette, it's going to take a long time. There are a lot, a lot, a lot of properties for sale. And as long as there's a lot of properties for sale, unless there's just a huge influx I don't think there's going to be a huge influx. And the reason I don't think there's going to be a huge influx is that you're always, you know, 
waiting for the people that can afford to come over and buy a property. They're taking into consideration way more than just these incentives. They're taking into consideration how much money they're paying on their taxes. Is Costa Rica really going to go to this worldwide taxation system or not? Okay. And they're considering a lot of things, okay? So I think it's gonna take some time before it changes from a buyer's market to a seller's market. And I think that's gonna take a, 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 I think it's gonna, I think because the economy in the United States being what it is, I think it's gonna take quite some time before that happens. Um, this is just my own opinion. Uh, prior to Trump coming into office, the economy was terrible, terrible, terrible during the Obama administration. And typically when the economy is bad, people kind of hold still. During Trump's administration, the economy got better, 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 better. People started moving, started doing things, you know, started spending money. Well, now that uh, he's not in administration, it's the Biden administration. We're seeing the economy drop, 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 prices going high. So people hold still. That's just my opinion. You know, uh, I'm not going to get into politics and all of that kind of stuff. That's just my opinion. That's what I see as I watch history. I love to learn from history, okay? So I don't think we're going to have a huge influx of people, but it is going to bring some people here, okay? So it might put an iron under you to say, you know, let me see about buying a piece of property soon. Let me investigate, you know, yeah. and uh, rent it out or something like that so you don't lose a piece of property if you got your eyeball on something. Yeah, I think it definitely will draw people who are planning to move to a foreign country and they're looking at different countries, looking at their options. It, I think it will draw those people, but um, I, don't, I don't think it'll be um, like people who weren't even considering moving, you know, like all of a sudden they're like, oh, let's move to Costa Rica. And there, like you said, there are so many properties for sale and what you might see listed on websites is a small fraction of wow. what's actually for sale. I mean, what you see listed on websites, Yeah. if I had to guess, I bet you it's not even 10%, 5% of what you actually see listed. And of course, we've done several videos showing you how you can go and find properties everywhere. It's just phenomenal, okay? So um, yeah, anyway, another great question. Brian says, hey, we come down in October and we're going to be there for 13 days. Is that a long enough period so we can start our residency? And yes, it is, okay? So... Now, what's important is, Brian, go ahead and start doing your research. Contact me because you are a premium member in the forum. Contact me personally, and I will tell you what attorney you need to go see so that you can start that process, who I recommend. Um, and, you know, inside the uh, forum, uh, there is a premium area that we're trying to grow and grow and grow. Hey, you can join the forum for free, but hey, 33 cents a day, you get all this juicy good stuff, you know, where we recommend uh, businesses that we know, like, and trust and uh, we also put in there businesses that we've had bad, bad experiences from that's given us the gringo price. You know, not, not my feelings that I can prove did us wrong. And that way you can avoid those people as well so that you don't get bitten like I was, okay? So anyway. Yeah, because you would definitely want to start gathering your um, paperwork that you need. Yes, you want to gather. From the United States, if, if I guess he's from the United yeah, he's, States. Yeah, so Brian, you want to get all of your paperwork so that when you get here, you can present your paperwork to start your residency process. Right, you'll need a uh, background check, you know, fingerprinted, you have to be fingerprinted. Um, you have to have your uh, birth certificate. If you're married, you have to have a marriage license. Uh, but it, all that is listed on the U.S. Embassy yeah. website, so you can find out yeah. what you need. So, uh, and of course I just interrupted her. We interrupt each other all the time. It's not because I'm mean and I abuse my wife. And I just love reading some of those funky comments. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, Dean he says. He talks a lot and I, I talk slowly. <laughs> uh, I, you know, so I get tickled looking at some of the comments sometimes. Matter of fact, let me ask you, I'm going to get on a rabbit trail real quick. Don't go there. No, I got to get on a rabbit trail. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know. I really have fun creating videos, and I had a blast creating the promo for this video. Hey, how many of y'all love the promo for the video? Give me, you know, give me a one. Now, how many of you thought my promo was kind of maybe out there and you didn't like it? Give me a number two. I'd, be, I'd like to know. One, you just love the promo or like the promo. Two, you like. Thumbs down, no good. Let me know, because I, I thought it was hilarious. I had a blast creating the promo, and I love you to just, I, you know, anyway. And I, I was surprised at how many people. I had, I think, five people that did not like it, okay? And I'm like, 
what was there not to like? And remember, it's a promo. And you know, one thing about our videos, you know, we're always going to give you the facts. We're going to give you the truth and we're never going to use clickbait. So in other words, you're never going to have to, to see uh, a picture that looks like Rebecca's taking a shower from her back, you know, and then you're watching the whole video to see if you see a nude girl taking a shower. No, you're not going to see that. <laughs> okay. We're not going to use clickbait. But now, Sometimes I will tease. I've actually thought about putting a picture of a girl showering and then in the video you get to see me showering. <laughs> that would be hilarious. So anyway, uh, you know, we never use clickbait, but I do like to have fun. So it looks like from the comments here, I hadn't seen a single two yet. Everybody just thought it was great. 1% because a lot of people didn't like it. And I'm like, but you're right. It's trolls. There's jealous people out there. So yeah. anyway. This, it's not that worried about the dislikes other than the um because that's what i tell them don't even go there because you can't please everybody for goodness sakes it's, you mean it's, i can't make everybody happy exactly so Dang. um you know you just you have to just have fun and do the best that you can and, and not worry about it however the dislikes with the algorithms do affect you know it, like you were saying it they look at it as a percentage so and if you get a bunch of um <laughs> likes to counter balance the uh the dislikes then that brings your percentage up that's right and then youtube starts to promote your stuff mm -hmm. and dean says um uh thanks for the visual you're welcome <laughs> dean <laughs> um <laughs> okay <laughs> you damaged some people <laughs> <laughs> he is scarred for life you can't unsee what you've seen <laughs> all right yeah and you don't use clickbait per se, but you do try to use your marketing skills. You do try to make um, the images, you know, something that people will click on that they will get their attention. Yeah, without. I mean, that's the reason our channel has yeah. grown so much is that I do take pride in what I do. And, you know, I've been in marketing for years. I've been doing the whole online thing for, uh, geez, uh, 15 years. Well, well, we've been married, what, 15, how long have we been married now? Man, we've been married so long, I can't count that high. It ain't that I don't remember. I just, I just, I got, I, it's more than I can count. So. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> For as long as we've been married, 15 years, I've been online and in, in, in this whole marketing thing, learning and having fun with it. So anyway. Yeah. Uh, Cutie just made her, you know, she. Cutie just she, made her appearance she, in the window. She came out of the window oh. and now she just jumped back in. <laughs> That's it. We have that pain missing right there just for her. That's her, our little cat door. <laughs> <laughs> So, so yeah, anyway, uh, love it, love it, love it. Okay, so hey, look at all of these. They, they loved it. They thought it was hilarious, okay? I think you do good work. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, Liz sounds a whole lot like me and you. She says, I love you guys, and I normally don't like people. Me neither. <laughs> we know what you're talking about. We know what you're talking about, Liz. <laughs> but the promo was hysterically good. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> I tell you right up, I don't like people, man. I said some of them can be mean, but... <laughs> I do, but yeah, you know, I wasn't really planning on having today's uh, live show, but uh, hey, I, I really, I have fun. I wasn't planning on it, and uh, at the last minute this morning, I says, I think I'm going to just go ahead and do a live. I, I enjoy what I do. Sorry, guys, but I really do appreciate you guys, really appreciate the... Uh, the um, the people that are, are giving, I really greatly appreciate you. Really appreciate it when you join the forum as well. And you know what I really appreciate? I really appreciate all those likes and those subscribes. So if you haven't subscribed, it does make a huge, huge difference. Really appreciate it, okay? All right, let's take a look here. And look, somebody put a thumbs down. So, so <laughs> wait, no way. Where do you see that at? Right here. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, there's already one dislike on our, on our show today. <laughs> I think that's just for funds. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um, let's see. Uh, John says, do you know how much the properties that are for sale are going for? Also, I love the background music you guys use for the videos. Thanks, oh, John. Thank you. You know, um, there is no typical price on properties. They are all over the map. You know, whereas in the United States, you know, you, you have these comps and comparables and things like that. You know, look. Uh, if I had a tiny piece of property and I wanted to sell it for a million dollars, I can, you know, I might not ever sell it, but I can. And that's typically what does happen in Costa Rica. Right. So, uh, but you can buy lots of properties at decent prices. Yeah. And I wish there was a way, and maybe there is, we need to investigate about that, to find out what properties are actually selling for. Maybe a realtor would 
would tell you that because I find that what the asking prices or way exaggerated, you know, they're, they're, yeah, some of the prices are just way too high, but you have to understand that a lot of Ticos really believe that everybody has too much money. If well, they looked at my bank not, account, it might change their mind. But yeah, it's not just Ticos. <laughs> it's um, a lot of foreigners that built their homes, you know, years back when the market was different, you know, and they think, well, okay, I put $500,000 into this property and it should appreciate, so I'm going to ask 700000 for the property. But at today's, with today's market, um, it, maybe they can only get 300000 yeah. for it. You know, that's unfortunate, but that is how the market... Well, it's kind of like so the real estate bubble when it busted years ago. You know, uh, everybody's properties were, I think, you know, exaggerated, you know, elevated to way too much money. And then when everything busted, people were upside down. So, and, and I, I, it's the way it is still here in Costa Rica. So, anyway. So, um, if you could find out... The value, I mean, what the properties are selling for, not just comparing what they're asking. Yeah. Now, Sue says, uh, Sue from Massachusetts, uh, if I buy a home in Costa Rica with cash, and I think that's most people because you're not going to get anyone to finance you, okay? If I buy a home in Costa Rica with cash, will I be taxed from the United States? Hey, I wished I knew that answer. I don't know that answer. I don't know why they would. But, hey, I really do not know that answer. You know, know. Uh, so you definitely want to get with your tax uh, attorney on that, okay? Or get with your attorney. Um, I'm taking a look here. So if I haven't looked at your question, I haven't answered your question, be sure to put it in the chat box, okay? Uh, now, uh, Dean says, if someone qualifies for either a pensionado, remember, pensionado is someone that's retiring, or an investor residency, what are the advantages or disadvantages to consider? Okay, Dean, this is my opinion. If you qualify for pensionado, that means you're getting a retirement check. If I were you, I would do that because most of the time, your retirement check is a whole lot cheaper than what you would tell them you're drawing or, or state. Because whenever, once you become a resident, then you're going to have to pay into the social caja, which is the health insurance. Nothing wrong with that, but all of that is dependent on how much income you make uh, and where you live, and the percentages vary from from 5% to 10 or 12, 13% of your stated income, okay? So whatever you state, if you state that you're bringing in $1,000 a month, and let's say that that's what you're bringing in, Depending on where you live, you might have to pay 6% of that $1,000, or depending on where you live, you might have to pay 10%. There's a lot of variables, and then you're talking to the person in the Kaha interview during the residency whenever they put that price, and from my understanding, that price can fluctuate, okay? So, if you were the investor, they're going to automatically assume that you have way more money than you might actually have. So in my opinion, if you can qualify under pensionado, then I would qualify under pensionado instead of underneath the investor. That's just my opinion. Yeah, I have to disagree with that. Okay. Because um, either way, you, you have to provide the proof of what your income is. So it, it's not going to go just by that they think you have more money because you invested. I mean, you could have inherited um, a, a million dollars from someone and you use that million dollars to buy your house, but now you're going to be living on your pension every month, you know, so. That's true. Now she's my accountant and <laughs> I don't know anything about laws, okay? I could accidentally break them. I'm not trying to. I try to abide by all the laws. So, so what was he asking the difference between, like which yeah, you one know, he what, would what qualify be, you for? Know, would be, no, he was just saying, which one would be better? Would it be better to do the pension auto or would it be better to do investor? Now, from I my would, understanding, the well, you know what? Either, both of those are f fairly quick and easy. Yeah. And uh, well, I would do the investor. This is not professional advice, but just thinking about these two things, the, the pension auto, uh, you have to continue to prove that like when you well that is a point you have to reapply and so you'd have to prove that again so let's say I don't know it drops <laughs> then you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to get reapproved but if you went on the investor it's you, a one-time deal and right, you're done right so I would I would do that that's a good point I lied <laughs> <laughs> okay so 
Anyway, that's that is that is a good point. Well, that's why we're just talk, you know, talking from experience or from things that we learned. So um, we certainly can't know everything. Yeah, I thought I knew everything, and then I married her. <laughs> so <laughs> she reminded me I didn't. Okay, <laughs> all right. So uh, let me take a look at some of these questions real quick here. Okay, I think I'm hitting most of the questions here, but if I haven't answered your question, be sure to put that in there, okay? Uh, so I'm coming through here, and I'm looking. Okay, so, uh, yep, I already answered Dean's question. He's like, at what point in the process could you take advantage of getting those things? And I think as soon as you apply, you can take advantage of it, okay? Okay, uh, Karen says, how do I find a PDF on the areas to live? And that PDF is somewhere. Matter of fact, I think if you go take a look at, and it's real easy. If you go to, to YouTube and you type in the best places to live in Costa Rica, ours is always number one. It's the number one video. Underneath that video, there's a PDF that you can download that talk about the five best places to live. And it's got a lot, a lot of information. Go there. However, in the forum, it's really easy to find because I got all that stuff in the forum, okay? And uh, so, anyway, but that's a quick way to find that, Karen. Yeah. And uh, last week, someone had asked why he's reading the questions. I'll address this about um, a question from last week. Someone had asked if there were any uh, barrios or neighborhoods in San Isidro that we would not recommend, like maybe they were dangerous and so forth. And uh, after that question, because we didn't know of any, um, after that question, this week we've been talking to a few people about it and we've gotten the names of a few neighborhoods that locals, Ticos, have said, you know, there's a lot of um, drugs, there's, you know, some crime going on in, in those neighborhoods and that uh, you probably should stay away from it. So we're going to put the names of those neighborhoods in the forum. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, uh, we, we do have to be very careful. You know, you know most of Costa Rica uh, is safe, okay? And there is a lot of petty crime, okay? And that's why you see bars everywhere, okay? And dogs everywhere, okay? Now, you know... Bars on the windows. Yeah, bars on the windows. I mean, take a look at here. I mean, there's bars everywhere, okay? Now, you know... Uh, I can't wait. There's we got a video I want to do for you real soon here that's going to really share some information. I think it's going to be super super valuable. But, you know, there are some things in Costa Rica, no matter what country you're in, there's going to be things you don't like. And I was just talking to Atika earlier today. You know, if I was in the United States, there's things I don't like. If I'm in Costa Rica, there's things I don't like. No matter where you live, there's things you don't like. However, no matter where you live, if you can control the environment, then there's a lot of crap you don't have to put up with, okay? So, you know, for example, uh, right now we're in the middle of town. There's a lot of street noise. Guess what? I don't want to live in the middle of town. If I don't want street noise, go live in a remote area. I, I don't like people. No, I don't like neighbors. I don't like barking dogs. Well, if I don't like that, then I buy a big enough piece of property. I don't have neighbors. I can control the environment. So really, when you can purchase a piece of property in Costa Rica and you can control the environment, you really can have a slice of paradise and you, you just got to be able to afford that paradise. Yeah. Well, if you can find a country that doesn't have any crime and is totally safe, you know. That's right. That's no got to be rare. Yeah, <laughs> and then once you get there, you probably ruined it. No. <laughs> okay, so anyway. <clears throat> Liz says, I have income from, uh, well, before I get there, uh, I saw a question a while ago. It says, how do I join the forum? Hey, just go to forum.cloudforestchapel.com. Forum.cloudforestchapel.com. And then there's a place there where you can register to join the forum for free, okay? And then you can always upgrade if you want to so you can have access to the premium areas, okay? <clears throat> Liz says, uh, I have income from retirement and rental houses. When applying, do I have to report the rental income with regards, with, with, with regards to how much I will be charged on medical CAHA or insurance? You know, Liz, I really don't know the answer to that. Um, because, you know, rental income, 
it, it sometimes it comes in, sometimes it don't. Sometimes you, I really don't know the answer to that. I do know that if you're trying to use rental income to qualify for um, the ren ren the rentistas, mm -hmm. you have to present also. A, I can't remember if it's a year or a two year contract from your tenant. I think it's a two year contract. Okay. Mm -hmm. At whatever price and you present a two year contract because they don't look at that as um, as a stable, steady income because renters can leave. You know, you, you can understand that. So, yeah. So, you know, uh, un unfortunately, it's just part of it, right? So, um... but that's another good question. Now, we haven't had to. Um, to deal with that because we don't have rental income. All of our income is on paper. You know, we can prove it very easily. Yeah. Uh, hang on. I'm not sure what happened here. Something happened as far as the live, uh, as far as the chat box. Okay. So let me just take a quick look here because uh, for some reason something accidentally changed. Um, so uh, anyway, there's, let me just take a look at some. So just bear with me a second here. I'm not sure what happened. Uh, let me see if I can find out what happened. Yeah, we can't see the chat box. Yeah, uh, for some reason it went into the preview, and I'm not sure why the preview went on. Um, so, hmm. hang on one second. I think it's finally going to... It says the premiere ended 74 minutes ago. What happened here? Uh, now, this is the premiere. Hang on you're, a second you're here. You're looking at the Yeah, I don't know what video. happened here. Hang on a second here. Live. Let me see if I can go back to, I don't know what happened. Give me a, bear with me, folks. Somehow something moved on me. So, uh, anyway, here we go. There, All right, we're back. back. Okay, right. sorry about that. My, for some reason, something changed. Internet gremlins is what it is, okay? <laughs> And uh, Creative says, that, hey, what's the best way to send and get email? So if you take a look at the uh, description in every one of our videos, except I don't know if I put it in this one. I think I might have. But there's a link that you can join our email list. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, yep, it is in here. If you go to the description below, then there's a place you can join our email list. You'll hear our personal story of what happened when we came. And then you'll actually get email from us, and you can reply back to that. And I answer every single email, okay? And you know what? While we're on that topic, uh, you know, we, we started a Facebook group. And I do want to let you know that, uh, you know... I'm not a Facebook person, so I'm not in Facebook all the time. And our YouTube channel has grown so much, I can't possibly answer every one of them, but I do have some people that are helping that volunteer to help answer some of those questions to the best of their ability. But if you want an answer from me and Rebecca, the best place to do that is in the forum. The whole reason we created that forum was so that because, you know, the same questions get asked again and again and again on YouTube. But when that question is asked in the forum, then I can answer that and everybody benefits from that inside the forum. And so the place to get personal questions answered from me and Rebecca is in the forum. Yeah, I, I think he's trying to say that um, he or she... Okay. It means the post office. Yep. Do they get regular post office mail? Yes, they do. You can get post office mail. It is very slow. Uh, normally, if I get a letter or mail from uh, the United States, it's a month, month and a half. Uh, and uh, if I get packages, it's the same thing, but it could get stuck in customs, which might mean traveling two to three hours to go get it out of customs. And I may or may never get it from customs, depending on what's in the package. Okay. But you can get mail, okay? Yeah. You can you can rent a post office box if you want something very specific. Um, that's what we have done so that we can get our mail um, because we have done house sits. We've moved around a lot, so um, having that PO box really helped to have uh, a location that we can always get our mail from. And uh, I find that having to get <coughs> those uh, the Costa Rican mail addresses. I don't have a lot of faith in that we'll get our mail that way, but uh, people do. But. Yeah. You know, now what you have to understand is that, look, most Ticos don't get mail like you and I get, okay? You're used to getting a ton of mail every single day. 
A lot of Ticos might go their whole life and never get a piece of mail, okay? Most of them do not have a post office box. If they do get something sent, they get it sent to the post office, and then they just go check the post office and see if they got a piece of mail. Right. Okay? And now, in let's say, like in the United States, a lot of things are online rather than the mail. You can opt out to uh, not get your bank statements in the mail, your bills in the mail, but it used to be that everything came in the mail. Yeah. You know, your utility mm -hmm. bills and um, all important things plus a lot of junk mail. Well, that's never been the case here in Costa Rica. They don't send out utility bills. They don't send out bank statements. Um, everything has is done by going to the local grocery store and telling them your account number and they tell you how much you owe and, and that's how you pay. But it's in, in the last couple of years, it's moved to online. So yeah. a lot of people are paying online now. That's through, right. Through that, and I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, the postal system isn't used like we're used to and it never will be. Okay. Now, um, Marcus has a great, great question. It's important that you know this. Okay. So Marcus says, well, can you ship as much stuff as you want? There's stuff that isn't registered or tracked by a serial number like cars, okay, are, which could actually be sold. Would anyone question 20 computers coming in a container, for example? And yes, they would. So while you might be able to ship a container and they're going to inspect it to make sure there's not illegal stuff in there, you're not going to be taxed on it. But if they see 20 computers, you're going to get stopped because Costa Rica doesn't want you bringing stuff in here and turning around and selling it. When we first came to Costa Rica, I had, what, I want to say four or five computers that we brought over, and they questioned us, and I had to explain to them yeah, that we were two coming for over. Me and two for you. That's we had right. a laptop and a desktop. And we were setting up an office, okay, but they tried to give us a hard time just bringing in four computers or five computers. Yeah. Um, with the, the containers, right now, they check every item in your container. And I think it's ran, it may be random it, uh, with packages, but I think with containers, they check every container, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. But they will look at every single item, un, you know, unwrap it if you've got it packaged for valuation, because different items get have tax. a different import fee right. percentage. Mm -hmm. Right. So, but with the the new law, if you're allowed to bring it in duty free, then they don't have to look at every single item in order to get its value to tax you because they're not going to be taxing you. However, they do still have laws about what you can and cannot bring into the country. So they still will need to be inspecting. They just won't be unwrapping every single thing. You know, I don't know if they use that's dogs right. and you know that's right. what they do or if they're going to yeah. do it random. so it's important to know that uh because like rebecca said yeah right now they inspect every i mean unwrap everything okay but obviously when it's not taxed they are just going to make sure you're not bringing things illegally or too much of one thing right and that's been a complaint from some of the people that they don't package it back yeah. well and things get broken or even things go missing but um that's one of the reasons, you know, I wondered why are they debating, like, why wouldn't they just pass this law since it will help, you know, it'll, it'll bring people in and it'll mean more money. And um, an article that I read kind of explained their thought process. They're debating this and considering, they're trying to consider all options or possibilities because they don't want the law to be abused by criminals. Yeah. You know, they don't want um, criminals taking mm -hmm. advantage of the law. But the way I kind of think of it, criminals uh, that have money, you know, they don't really need to worry about the law. I mean, they're already importing yeah, they're and exporting always, stuff. They're going to always find a way if, around yeah, the system. If they have yeah. money, they're already yeah. now, bribing um, and stuff. Creative has a really great, great question, and it's one that I love because it really talks about us. Because uh, Creative says, if a couple has a baby in Costa Rica, are they not res and they're not residents. So Rebecca and I, we're not residents right now. And if we have a baby tomorrow, okay, we got to go to work fast. If we have a baby tomorrow, will we be automatic residents? Okay. So if you, so here's, here's the short answer to that. If you come over here creative and you do have a child that baby will be Costa Rican. It'll have dual citizenships, from my understanding. It does not automatically make you a resident. You have to go through that same process and apply. But guess what? You do become a resident because you had a baby in the country. Okay? That's your qualification. You still yep. have to apply. It's not automatic. 
even your the dual citizenship for your for your child is not just automatic. You ha you have to go and, and uh, file the the papers. With yeah, the you're still going to have to do the paperwork, submit the fingerprints, all of that stuff. And so you had a baby, and you found out you're illegal crook. Well, you're illegal. You get deported. You and your baby and the whole family. Okay. So uh, you can have a baby here, which is great. I would love to do that. Okay. And uh, and then you become a you know, you do the paperwork to become a resident because you have a baby in Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. Now, you said something just in jest, I know, but I'm going to point out. Um, you said the baby would be deported. Actually, no, because Costa Rica is very very uh, protect protective of yeah. their citizens. If you, your child is born here, um, it is a Costa Rican uh, citizen, and we've had we've heard of some situations where parents get divorced and one of the parents wants to take the child out of the country and it's not that easy yeah. if that child was born here and you know or even became a resident now john asked a question it says any idea on the process works for rentista shipping stuff down and it's the same process so you know, um, it, the rentista, okay, so we talked, we, I'm glad you brought that up because we talked about the investor, hey, 100, 200000 now, 150000 when it passes, okay? The investor, $1,000 a month, okay? But the rentistas, those are people with fixed incomes like Rebecca and I. You know, you, the easiest way is that you deposit $60,000 into a bank account and you can withdraw 2500 every month to live on. You do that again in another two years, okay, and you apply for residency that way. There is supposedly another way, but anyhow, the rentista, it's a different process, but getting your container and uh, being able to qualify for those incentives is the same thing, okay? doesn't matter what category of, of uh, resident you are. As long as you are a resident, then you can still benefit from those. But they are, they really are focusing on those three main categories because those are the three most popular categories, okay? Yeah. But regardless, if you can apply to be a resident and you move down here, then you qualify to, once you start the residence process, then you can take advantage of those benefits, those incentives, mm -hmm. okay? They're even trying to make a new category of residency. Uh, for digital nomads yeah. and I from what I'm reading that will have to be renewed annually so every year you'll have to reapply to get residency under the um, digital nomad category now, I don't know if if that's just for a period of time like you'll have to reapply every year for five years and then after that your residency is permanent don't know the details of that but it's something that they're working on to try to um, just like they're trying to draw investors, they're trying to draw um, digital nomads because that's a new thing, especially with the, the coronavirus, the COVID-19. A lot of people have begun working from home, so they're able to work from anywhere as long as they have Internet. And a lot of people are considering Costa Rica for that purpose. So they're trying to make that um, appealing to digital nomads yeah. to compete with other countries to, you know, draw yeah. those people and here. And so that's another thing that was a, a great benefit that came out of the whole COVID mess is that it forced a lot of people to be working from home, which then, you know, digital nomads last were here long, long, long before COVID, okay? You know, we've been digital nomads for 10 years, okay? However, you know, people, Costa Rica never recognized that as a serious thing, and it is serious. And now that more and more people are doing it, they're beginning to say, hey, we need to create a residence program for digital nomads, okay? Mm -hmm. And so uh, there's a good question here. Liz says, would it be cost effective to ship a 10-year-old car over that's got 100,000 miles on it after the law was passed? What is the average cost to ship a car, uh, not including the tax and import fees? And, you know, I, don't, I have no idea what the average cost is. Um, you know, one of the guys here that's premium member, Brian, I think Brian was quoted, what, $6,000 to ship your car over, Brian? I, I don't know what the typical price is to ship a car. However, it would be advantageous for you because if your vehicle is 10 years old, that same vehicle, 10 years old in Costa Rica, would probably cost, uh, someone buying that vehicle would probably end up costing them 
uh, probably about 8,000, 8 million kilometers, probably about sixteen twenty thousand dollars $20,000. So a 10-year-old vehicle with 100,000 miles on it probably would sell for anywhere between fifteen dollars and $20,000. Vehicles here are just crazy, crazy high, okay? Yeah, used vehicles. Um, Brian says it's $7,000. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian, for that quick answer. So Brian was quoted for a 2006 Jeep Wrangler, $7,000 to bring his vehicle in. And so that's why, uh, you know, watching our videos, being inside the forum, you know, other people can help you and you can get answers because, you know, I haven't shipped a vehicle, but Brian is getting ready to do that. So guess what? Join the forum so that you can help one another, okay? Um, and, you know, you know, we're not in Facebook all the time. I, I just hate Facebook, but I'm in the forum. So make sure that you join the forum, okay? And that way we can help one another a whole lot. Yeah, I have to wonder if they pass this law um, and people are going to want to bring their things over, if that will open up some competition, like, um, you know, companies start to make that part of their business, you know, bringing... Uh, vehicles and containers over so that might lower the price yeah now creative asked a good question it says can you combine visas like you know a pension getting married uh, having a digital nomad having a baby no from my understanding you pick the category okay mm -hmm. you have to pick the category I'm gonna be an investor and you're an investor that's what you do I'm uh, you know I got married to a Tika and that's what you do uh, okay, so you can't combine them. You got to pick one, and that's what you do. You uh, go with. <laughs> you go with that and get your residency. Okay. Now I have heard that in certain situations, when uh, a person's circumstances change while they're in the process of their residency, they can um, alter their paper, change their paperwork. Yeah, but, you know, but like, then like that causes you, a lot of problems and yeah, time it's not and pushes things back. I would never suggest doing that. But let's say you um, went in, brought in all your fingerprint stuff, you know, your background check and your marriage certificate and birth certificate, and you had all that paperwork started, and you went um, as an in investor, or let's say pensionata, and then something happened to your pension, and so now you want to go as an investor because you're going to be buying a place, then they do allow you to um, to change midstream, yeah, they, but they, not apply for both at the same time. But you can change it. I wouldn't suggest that because then it just kind of puts things back, you know, slows things down. Mm -hmm. Hey, there's a great question here, and I'm glad that Finster Lips, Finster Lips said, hey, look, I am concerned about Costa Rica because of the petty crime problem. Is there a place or a way to minimize this exposure? Absolutely, okay? Look, uh, Costa Rica has a lot of petty crime. It is terrible. But like I said, it is petty crime. I can't count how many propane tanks were stolen from us. However, I am huge on accepting my own responsibility because my awesome and crazy and, and often left field wife said, why don't you chain that thing down? I said that from the first time. And you're like, no, nobody's going to take that. Who would take a propane tank? I don't want to hear it. <laughs> at, at about, what, the fourth at, tank you decided to chain it? After about the fourth it? tank, I decided, <laughs> you know, I got this great idea, Rebecca. I think I'm going to lock down the propane tank. <laughs> so, yeah. Look. If you just have some good common sense, okay, in the United States, you can put a beach towel on the beach and you can put your wallet underneath it and your keys and you can go swim and maybe nobody will take it. That ain't happening in Costa Rica, okay? You know, if you park your car on the beach and you're like, I'm going to hide my keys underneath here, somebody is watching you and they will steal your vehicle. So, you know, petty theft, you can stop 99% of the petty theft by using some good old common sense, okay? Not making it easy. <laughs> Don't make it easy. Nor making it, yourself a target. Yeah, that's right. Don't make yourself a target. Don't leave stuff out. You know, when we go to a restaurant, she hangs her purse on her chair, and uh, it's where, you know, it's either still around her arm, it's around her leg, it's where someone cannot take it. If they take it, then they're going to have to take her leg off, okay? So you just have to go use some good common sense. And if you use good common sense, you don't have that problem. Mm -hmm. The reason there's tons of gated, gated places is to keep these punks who do the petty theft 
from coming in and getting stuff. So really, petty theft is not a problem when you can control the circumstances. Matter of fact, for a long time, people stole from us because I didn't have a dog. Well, once I got a dog and I bought a big dog, not some little barking chihuahua, okay? And guess what? They won't come. You put up cameras. Cameras are cheap. Go buy you some cameras and put you up some signs that says there's video. Guess what? They won't come because they're going to be video camera. So yeah. it is very, very easy to stop the petty theft. Yeah, it's, it's mostly crimes of opportunity. And it mostly happens in touristy places. You know, when we're down by the beach, you know, I watch my purse or, you know, we watch our belongings. Um, now, here in San Isidro, there are some uh, restaurants that we frequent that we know the people, we trust the people, we know it's, it's local people, and, you know, we're not at all concerned that somebody is going to come and steal my purse or take our cell phone. In fact, we've lost our cell phone at a restaurant. It, it fell over the, the edge of the, you know, of the bar, and the employee found it for us and gave it back to us. So we're not talking about everybody. Ticos are not just normally um, thieves. It's, it's just like anywhere else. There's, there's criminals. And uh, the majority of the people, the Ticos, don't like the criminals. They, um, that's why they have the bars on the windows and so forth. They're trying to protect themselves as well. But the problem with, with foreigners is you're almost a target. So if the Ticos feel like that in their neighborhoods, imagine you as a foreigner, they already have the concept because they watch television, they already have the idea that you're coming here with loads of money. Um, so you are a target. And yeah. so you have to, uh, you know, watch that. Don't don't go in a bar in Hako and get totally plastered. You'll lose everything you have. Interesting. <coughs> so, <coughs> uh, all right, so I'm looking through here, and uh, I want to make sure to answer all of your questions. I do want to try to keep it a little bit short today. Rebecca and I was hoping that we'd jump on the motorcycle and go somewhere. It's pouring down rain, so that ain't happening. <laughs> yeah, it's rainy season. We kind of knew that. <laughs> you know, we we still hope though. Every now and then in rainy season, you have, um, you know, one or two days in a row where it doesn't rain in the afternoon. So. Okay, now Brian asked a good question. Says, "Well, hey, you know, how much money does it take to get our residency process started?" And really, that is different for whatever law firm. Okay, but in most most cases, okay, when you start your residency process. On average, okay, this is just an average. It's going to cost you about three thousand, anywhere from two, you know, two thousand to three thousand dollars a piece to get your residency, okay. And normally they ask for half of that up front, okay. Mm -hmm. So in order to get your residency process started, if it's two of you, it's going to be somewhere around three thousand dollars to get that process started, okay. Mm -hmm. But you want to make sure that you are, you know, contact me inside the form, and I'll tell you who it is that you want to get a hold of or who it is that we feel like would be advantageous for you. Yeah, there's a firm that is very reputable that lots of people recommend. They've um, done a lot of good work. They're higher in cost than other places, but you know, they have a really good reputation. There, I think I saw $6,000 was the cost for a couple. Uh, don't quote me on that though. But, um, and I've also heard, you know, talk to people that say, by the time everything was done, it ended up costing them ten thousand dollars. So for what? For their residency, because Ooh, they had to. I do, never heard it be that much. Yeah, they had to do. Um, they probably got ripped off. I'm thinking. I'm sure they got the Gringo prize. Yeah, yeah, but they had to get translators to translate all the paperwork and stuff. So that's why it's important you go to somebody who's reputable because someone who's just going to take advantage of you because they know you don't know any better. Okay, you'll start the process and they'll give you a price. Let's say they say, okay, it's $4,000 for you and your wife. And they'll start the process. And then, well, all these documents have to be translated. And so, and then, you're oh, already, that wasn't included. Right, you've already given them the $4,000. And then they inform you that everything has to be translated. And that's going to be another $2,000. Oh, and, and, and the, uh, the 
immigration off of charges this and that wasn't included. Oh, right. and, and I got to get my shoes shined and that wasn't included. So you have to ask everything, right. you know, so when you but go if, there. If you use a reputable company, um, they actually, this particular company actually lists out everything All that is included. All their prices on the website makes it very clear and they'll even let you pay it off monthly, okay? So, hey, you know, it's very important that you have a reputable company. Uh, don't get some Joe Blow who says, yeah, we can help you do that because yeah. you end up losing money because they end up charging you for this, that, and another. And, yeah. oh, yeah, and I had to go to San Jose and that's an extra hundred dollars because I drove there for you mm -hmm. and 12 other clients. Anyway, you will get ripped off if you're not careful in Costa yeah. Rica. We've experienced these, some of this personally. <laughs> so, um you know, just make yeah. sure you do, uh, this is what I say, when it comes to residency lawyers, you get what you pay for. That's right. So you want to, you know, inside the, the forum, and uh, I'm going to update that area today. Inside the forum, there's an area, you know, where we talk about who we recommend so that you can get your residency. And that way you can go to that website, you can see it, you know, they're reputable, they give you information, they can help you, and you're not going to get conned because you're gringo, okay? All right. So, uh, because you know, what's included in that price, you know, the, when you talk to someone, it's unfortunate. You, and you don't even know what to ask and they don't tell you. But if you go to someone reputable, then everything's all inclusive and you don't have to worry. Yeah. Just like with the petty theft, it's crime of opportunity. You know, they'll steal from you if you're not paying attention and um, you're making yourself a target. I find that with, with services, if somebody is of that mindset, you know, they're not an honest person and they're just out, you know, to get as much money as they can, it, those crimes are also of opportunity. If they see that you don't have a clue, that you don't know, um, that's why it's important to get prices from more than one place so that when someone tries to charge you double, you know better. That's right. You know, the, the, I really, you know, the thing I hate about Costa Rica the most is the gringo pricing, okay? Now, keep in mind, I love Costa Rica. I love Ticos. Most of them are very friendly. However, a lot of them will take advantage of you. But that's true anywhere mm -hmm. in the world, okay? You just it, had a disadvantage because you don't know. That's right. You don't know. I mean, let's think about it like this. If Rebecca was in the United States, and she's by herself as a single woman. She goes to a mechanic, a and if that mechanic, mechanic is not <laughs> honest, and she says, you know, there's a ticking in my engine, and I don't know what that noise is. He could easily say, ma'am, I'm sorry, but your engine is blown. It's going to cost $3,000 to replace that engine. And maybe it was nothing more than a rock in her tire, okay? So, hey, people in the United States will take advantage of you. But in Costa Rica, because it's a poor country, it just feels like there's more people in Costa Rica taking advantage of you. And if you don't speak the language, you don't know, then it's too easy to take advantage of people in Costa Rica. It's real, okay? But I'm going to do a video, and I'm going to talk about how you can avoid the gringo pricing right. a it lot. Is, it is avoidable. That's the thing. It is avoid, avoidable. Um, make friends. You know, make, make good Tico friends. And I see that... Um, Brian is saying that, you know, you quoted never trust a, a Tico, and I, I don't agree with that, you know. I know you quote that, and I know you it's know, been told mm -hmm. to you by a Tico friend, you know, but um, it's like anywhere else. I mean, Ticos are not all out to get you. They're not, they're, I've Not I've everybody's come, out to get you, yeah, you know. Now, I've come across lots of very loving, trustworthy, caring people. Um, that I consider my friends. Now, I kind of um, am in, you know, I deal in a different realm. I'm talking to the little ladies or, or uh, you know, women my age or, or younger at the grocery store or where I meet them, um, you know, shopping, just different places, restaurants. Alan Moore has to deal with people when he's trying to get the car fixed or he's trying to buy. I'm trying to get some stuff um, welded. I'm trying to, you know, and I'm dealing with guys that has a welding shop. Yeah. And so, so he wants to charge me an insane amount of money. And I'm like, dude, are you for real? You know, so. Um, so you're dealing with different situations, um, you know, now, you're trying to get services. Now, now, now. 
Creative has a good question which is going to lead into something I ought to talk about. So Creative says, okay, well, how does that work if you get a gringo price, okay, you get charged a gringo price, and you report it to the police, will anything happen? Well, no. You want to know why? He gave you the price. You agreed to it. And so he later you, you found out <laughs> that you got cheated. Well, you agreed to it, okay? Now, some people say that is just a... Uh, what is that word? Uh, someone said it the other day. Uh, it's... Uh, I don't know what you're trying to. They said uh, it's just... Uh, if someone charges you a price, in other words, it's like the stinking uh, used car salesman, and he tries to sell you the car for $10,000, and you don't dicker with him, and you agree to, then uh, it's not crooked. No, it is crooked if you don't know any better, and then you get charged, okay? Right. so. And what we've experienced is that a lot of um, service places, well, let me not even say a lot, some service places almost take it as a challenge to get the highest price from you because um, they, they think that gringos are stupid, really. And in a way we are when it comes to services because we don't know what is valued. I mean, my husband knows exactly how much an oil change is in the United States. He knows how much it would cost to, uh, to replace um, you know, to uh, get four something tires well or whatever. Did, yeah, all, you know. all of that stuff. Uh, but here he's not sure what you know, and how can you know all those things? Get a Tico friend, somebody that you can trust, and ask them what the going, you know, what the going rate is. <coughs> That's right. Because Cre you're in a whole other country where yeah, the valuation they, of things is, is totally and different. And it's generally way, 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 way cheaper in Costa Rica to get something done than in the United States, okay? But there are going to be Ticos that's going to try to rip you off. It's not just Costa Rica. I don't care if you're in Panama, Nicaragua, if you're in the Philippines, if you're in the United States. No matter where you are, people are going to try to rip you off. So, hey, the gringo pricing is real, okay? But no matter where you are, it's real that people will try to take advantage of you. You just have to know it does happen here, but there are ways to prevent it. And like Creative says, she says, you know, one of her best friends is a Tico. And uh, he's like a big brother to me. His whole family has adopted yes, me. And yes. not all Ticos are bad. No, no I've met some you know, wonderful people. I mean, I've got, I've got a Tico friend that, uh, hey, you know, I really, really like this guy. He, I, you know, a matter of fact, I think he's my best friend in Costa Rica. He personally is a Tico, and he has told me, Alan, never, never, never trust a Tico. Now, this is a Tico telling me not to trust a Tico, okay? And that's because he knows that a lot of Ticos just try to take advantage of gringos, okay? And he's been to the United States. And so he says, when I went to the United States, never did somebody try to give me the Tico price. No, the price is the same for everybody. Race, creed, color, okay? But it's just a thing in Costa Rica. You just have to know it, but know how to avoid it. That's all. Yeah, and I, if I have to buy something that I'm not sure about, I try to go to places that have the prices um, published, you know, maybe online they have uh, their price for services already listed out. That way I know. I already know what it costs before I even go in. So, and yeah. your friend that is saying that, he doesn't mean every, he, he doesn't, doesn't mean literally every mean every single, single person. But you know, you know, we're just talking about the majority, okay? There are, I'm, I'm telling you, there, the majority of the Ticos here are really very nice people. They're not confrontational. Okay, we love Costa Rica, but we do give you the good, the bad, and the ugly. I, there's no advantage to me to have this channel. I'm not a travel agency. I'm not trying to sell you some kind of service to help you move down here. I'm not trying to get you to, to buy anything. I do this because I wished I had somebody that would have helped us when we moved down here. So you know what? Yeah. And we're hoping to make money from it off of YouTube. Hey, you know, eventually YouTube <laughs> so, pays us a few dollars every yeah. month. But as you know, we grow, it, as we grow, it'll be more and more and more. And as you guys subscribe, as you guys join the forum, it helps offset offset the overhead cost. You know, everything does cost money. Yeah. So yeah, it'd be great to make some money from it, but. That's not what we rely on, okay? Right. And um, I think a, a big reason that gringo pricing happens is that there are a lot of um, 
poor people and they tend to think that Americans, Canadians, you know, foreigners, if they're able to travel, they're thinking they have way more money than I do and they have money to spare. You know, uh, services is a different situation, but um, <coughs> Uh, beggars um, and people just trying to sell their trinkets and, and stuff like that they they target the Americans of course because they figure they have money to spend yeah. you know yeah. they tar- <clears throat> you know so. um, I mean that's the reason we put this forum together so that we can share and we can help one another okay um, you know I love you too but I can't answer every single question uh, I hate Facebook so I'm not gonna <laughs> answer every question but I love the forum, and the forum is a great way that we can help one another. You know, Creator says, well, hey, you know, maybe we should have a gringo barbecue twice a year. You know, get together where we can help one another. We can network, you know. What are your thoughts on that? Hey, you know, that's an awesome idea. Although, in reality, you know, how difficult or how easy would it be for everybody to come to one place and do that, okay? Hey, I, I'm game. I would love to do that, okay? Yeah, a good idea would be, like, um, during... Uh, well, of course, that would single out Americans, but like during Thanksgiving or the Christmas time, because if you're still in Costa Rica and you're without family, it's nice to get together with uh, your Tico friends or your Gringo friends. You know, those are good occasions. Yeah. You know, so, you know, I think that's an awesome idea, but it takes someone heading all that up, getting that together, and that would be a great idea. Yeah, because you know, they celebrate Christmas here, yeah. of course, so but they don't know, celebrate Thanksgiving. It, it's possible that, you know, right now, Rebecca and I are very, very busy trying to get to our dream piece of property that I hope will be soon. But once we get there, okay, then maybe we can do that kind of thing where we can say, hey, uh, we're gonna we're gonna gather together a couple of couples. We're gonna do tours. We'll show you around. Or hey, we're gonna have a barbecue. Everybody's invited to come. Bring something to grill. We're gonna just have a great time together and you know spend a day or something. So you know all that stuff kind of helps each other out. But you know finding a it's very important. Okay, and, and I don't want to go on and on about this. But if you get a good Tico friend, because not all Ticos are bad. But if you get a good Tico friend that you build a relationship with, that you can trust, it will help save you a ton of money. However, I will tell you from personal experience that I've had Ticos that I thought, I thought were my friends who said they were here to help me, who then later took advantage of me, who actually laughed in my face and said, you gringo, you pay the dollars, not Tico price. I don't understand that, okay? I don't understand that. You saying you're my friend, but you're going to charge me dollars instead of Kelowna's. No, you're just a worthless, take advantage of Tico, okay? And that's just wrong. So you have to understand, and that's why my friend says don't trust the Tico, because too many of them try to help you under the guise that I'm going to be your friend. I don't want nothing out of it, but they really are just trying to take advantage of you at some point in time. As you trusting, have to build a relationship. Yeah. As trusting as I am, uh, it's not good to be overly trusting. You want to, you know, keep some skepticism and uh, some caution, like Alan was saying, because uh, there are people that will just take advantage of you, especially when they know that you don't know any yeah. better. Yeah. You know, I, I think, you know, getting together around Thanksgiving would be a great time because they don't celebrate that here, and a lot of Americans do celebrate that. And, uh, you know, not to ostracize people from other countries, but hey, who cares? You get to eat turkey and cranberry sauce, you know, right? And have food, you know, whether you celebrate it or not really doesn't matter. It's probably just a good time to get together and socialize and meet people and make connections. So anyway, I think that's a great idea. Um, uh, Teresa says we're coming in January the 3rd, or we're coming in January for three weeks for our first visit, woohoo, to explore uh, the idea of moving there. We will be staying in uh, Wava. I'm not, I don't know where Wava is. Uh, What should we be spending our time doing? Hey, that's a great question, and Teresa, here's what I would tell you to do. When you come down, if you haven't already watched our video that talks about the best places to live, we talk about five places because we have been all over the place. Now, we don't go to where there's a lot of tourists. We don't go where there's a lot of expats, okay? Because where there's tourists and expats, prices are more expensive, but it is easier to buy stuff and find things, okay? But we talk about the five best places. Watch that video. And if you're going to come down here, go to all five of those places. 
and we're talking about going down to San Beto because it's hardly nothing down there, but it's raw and it's wonderful and it's a great place to meet some good, honest, hardworking, loving Ticos, okay? And we talk about going around Estorillos and we talk about going over to the Lomoin side and visiting Puerto Viejo and Cahuita. And we talk about going to uh, uh, the San Isidro area and the Rivas area. And uh, what's the fifth place? Oh, I was sorry. Oh, yes. over, over in... Uh, the uh, peninsula of um, Guanacaste, Guanacaste Peninsula. Peninsula. So some great, great places. That's what you want to do. Don't spend all your time in one area. You want to see these other areas mm -hmm. to kind of get a feel because all those areas so are, are so very different. Yeah. In fact, we had some really good friends that we made, a couple that came here from Massachusetts, and um, we ended up meeting with them. They actually lived right by us and didn't know we, we met them. Uh, they were walking and um, met them right out in front of our house. And so they came to the area of Rivas and uh, they went to different areas. Um, you know, they thought Rivas was going to be the area for them, but after traveling around, they actually decided that they really loved the Caribbean side, which we don't brag on the, you know, we don't. Uh, talk too much about the Caribbean side because you had a bad experience there and everything. But just from our personal experience, we we weren't that impressed. Although it's so beautiful. Yeah. Anyway, everybody's experience is different. They went there and uh, they decided that you know what, that's our area. And yeah. you know, had they stayed on the Pacific side, they would have never known if they really like the Caribbean you know side. You, you you definitely you know people are so different you know and we respect everybody's belief whether you believe or don't believe whether you love mother nature whether you love God whether you love the doorknob I don't care what you believe I respect what you believe and we also we want people to respect what we believe but you know what's important is when you go somewhere if, if you're not like us you might not like what we like I wasn't crazy now the the Caribbean side I'm talking about gorgeous, way more beautiful ocean I waters really like than the, the Pacific side. side. Didn't like the people over there. Bad vibe for me. But for our friends, they loved the vibe. They enjoyed it there. So it's totally different, okay? And so you've got to go check out those places in order to find out what is really just going to, you know, what feels right for you. Yeah. And again, on the Caribbean side, it's not. Most of the people are awesome, but there are a few um, people that can, you know, like one bad apple can ruin the, the whole, uh, what is it, basket? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And of course, you know, in, in here, uh, Sarong says that she's been here for 15 years and she can, uh, you know, she can confirm, look, she's been here 15 years and it's just unfortunate but, you know, you get these Ticos who pretend to be your friend and, you know, then you have the, their name on your bank accounts or, or in corporations and things like that because they're helping you. And then before you know it, they can take advantage of you mm. and take it all away from you. Yes, so don't be never, so trusting. Never, never do that. Never have a Tico in your corporation. Never have a, you know, because, hey, you will lose it. I'm telling you, when, when something happens and you go to court, and the judge is looking at a Tico and a Gringo. Who do you think? Come on, use a little sense. Who's going to have favor? Come on. Well, and even if they give um, equal, you know, like don't favor anybody. Um, we know somebody who signed over some rights to, to mm -hmm. um, do a transaction for him involving his house to get his house sold. And so he signed over, what, what do you call it, power of attorney. Mm-hmm. And he didn't read the whole thing. He didn't read the whole thing because it was in Spanish. He, he, he didn't trusted, understand Spanish. He said the guy was his friend for years. Yeah, and he trusted the guy. And so he did not think that the guy would do him wrong. Well, the guy ended up stealing his property, but it was legal what he did. He stole the property legally because yeah. the guy signed it over trusting that what the guy told him was true. Right, and he... The, our gringo friend took the Tico to court, but the judge said, you know, he didn't steal from you. He didn't take it from you. You gave it to him. You signed the paper. 
And of course, our gringo friend argued the point, you know, his lawyer argued the point that he didn't know what he was signing. He didn't know he was signing over that much authority uh, to that person. You know, was the judge supposed to say, oh, sorry, yeah, poor you, you didn't read, you didn't you know. You didn't read the fine print. You know, so you know. we're we going to make an exception. No, he yeah. said, you know, it was your responsibility to know what you were signing. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm real, real big on accepting responsibility for my own actions. I have lost thousands upon dollars. I'll share it with you one day. I've lost thousands of dollars for the gringo price, but it's my own fault. I did not go get several different opinions or several different prices. I trusted the one guy and I got gypped big time. Guess what? His name is inside the forum so that you don't get gypped big time, okay? So, hey, it happens. Yeah, um, and our number one fault that causes us a lot of grief and a lot of problems that we wouldn't have otherwise is that we don't know the language. We know words, you know, we, we know some of it, but not enough to do things like negotiate and, you know, so uh, that's caused us a lot of grief, but yeah. we have made friends that uh, are very kind and help us out, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, uh, another good question here is that uh, Greg says, I'm a big Buccaneer fan. How easy is it to watch U.S. sports in Costa Rica? And, uh, hey, you know, uh, it's amazing. You can't get Internet everywhere, but you can get TV in the craziest places in Costa Rica. So, and they do have channels where yeah. you can get ESPN and all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, you can get all the so. sports uh, channels. And, um, of course, here you have to watch it in, in uh, Spanish. You know, they translate everything to Spanish. But uh, you can put the subtitles in English. You know, so I don't think you'll have any problem with watching that, okay? Um, and, of course, he's, uh, Greg also asked, what is the Internet situation like? Are some areas better than others? Yes, we've talked about that many times before, but that's why we do these lives. You know, if you're closer to the, the closer to the city you are, the better the Internet is. The more remote you are, the more difficult it is. But it is getting better and better and better. Uh, pretty soon, Star Starlink will come out. And when Starlink comes out, you'll be able to get Internet anywhere, okay? Yeah. And Costa Rica and, has run yeah. fiber optic lines all over the place. Yeah. But they're, but they're they, not selling it they're yet. They're not selling it off those fibers. <laughs> That's what we're waiting for. Miles and miles and miles of fiber optic line all over Costa Rica, but you can't tap into it. I'm like, duh. You know, anyway. And Kevin says, hey, I've been in Puerto Viejo for three months. Not a single problem. Love it. Hey, that's great. You know, every single day I had a problem in Puerto Viejo. But every single day I was in Puerto Viejo, I have someone comes up and says, hey, got some marijuana. Want some? I'm good. I bought some cocaine. I got some cocaine. Want some? I'm good. I got enough cocaine crack. I don't need none. <laughs> I don't do drugs. I'm a health, uh, health nut, okay? But, you know, and so every single day, uh, and I just, I just didn't like that. And see, you didn't, that bothered you so much. That didn't bother me. I yeah, mean, they you know, weren't rude or anything. No, they weren't they just, rude. They just trying just, to make money. It yeah. is illegal. And, you know, but hey, if you do drugs, I could care less if I mean, what I, you do I just do pretended is up they were you. asking me if I wanted to buy a little bracelet yeah, or a necklace. Yeah, you want to buy a rose, said, you know. No, thank you. Yeah. No, thank you. And no, thank they, you. They'd you know, go away. But, you know, in my opinion, because... You know, in the Marine Corps, I was military police. I've got military police training. And anytime that you have drugs and you have prostitutes, well, all that does is that encourages more crime, okay? And so, you know, it, immediately I'm always on alert. I'm very observant. I'm watching everything, okay? So doesn't mean it's bad. Uh, if, if you smoke a little weed, do drugs, it doesn't mean you're bad. Hey, that's your choice. Nothing wrong with that, okay? Yeah, Good. but that's really the only thing that bothered you. Um, yeah, that, that was probably the biggest thing because, and, you know, there were some people there with some serious, serious attitudes, yeah, you know, yeah. and I, I just, I did not like the vibe. I didn't like the attitude on that yeah. side. But that was okay. a very small percentage of the population that had a really bad attitude and uh, was disrespectful. Yeah. You know. you know. Now, Greg says, hey, I'm a health nut, too. Do you grow your own vegetables, fruits? Can watermelon grow in Costa Rica? Man, mm -hmm. you can grow some seeds. You great. can grow <laughs> anything you want in Costa Rica. It is crazy. Matter of fact, I mean, it, you can throw it on the ground. That baby will start sprouting. It is amazing what will grow in Costa Rica. So, uh, yeah, I planted some seeds the other day. Maybe you'll see that video soon, okay? Uh, and uh, 
you know, we've been renting, so we haven't been able. I have grown some tomatoes, and we picked some of our own tomatoes at one place. But anyway. It, yeah, we made a little garden at one place, but then we ended up moving, so <laughs> we lost our little garden. Yeah, so awesome, awesome, awesome. So, hey, Creative says, hey, I'm a U.S. Army veteran as well. Thank you for your service. Hey, thank you as well. You know, it is amazing. So anyway, um, Greg says there are some streaming services nowadays, and so long as you have Internet, you'll see Tom Brady winning uh, the eighth Super Bowl. <laughs> I have one carry it with me all over the world and watch my sports. I so, see that's good to know. We're not big TV people. Yeah, so yeah. we don't know a lot about that. I'm a little bit crazy. I've never ever watched a football game in my life. So call me cuckoo. I'm just not a sports fan, okay? I love to be outside. I love to run. I love to work out. I'm a health nut. You know, me and cucumbers tomatoes go for a race. Hey, I'm just nuts that way. <laughs> but we do see when we go into a restaurant that they will have ESPN playing on the on the TV. They're watching games. You know, we'll see American teams playing when we're, you know, in the restaurant. So we'll see golf sometimes. But. Oh, oh, yeah. Now, Jonathan asked a great question and says, you know, what would you say is a good place for a beach lover that is, uh, you know, maybe a secluded place, maybe 30 minutes away from the beach? And hey, that's you're talking about the uh, uh, Tina Moste area. It's 30 minutes away from the beach. It's you can find lots of secluded places. 30 minutes, you're at Dominical. But yeah. my favorite beach, our favorite beach is Estorios. Estorios. Oh, Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful yeah. beach. Estorios has three different sections: Oeste, Centro, and Este. And our favorite is Oeste. Yeah. But um, you know, think about it. Costa Rica is all coastline on you know on the the east and the west borders uh you know it's bordered on the north and the south of course by countries but they the majority of their borders are beaches and then when you leave the you know drive inland from the beaches it becomes mountainous <clears throat> so you immediately get some altitude you immediately get cooler temperatures so i mean it, yeah. it's so many places, and then there's the Nicoya Peninsula. You know, that's a whole another section that has um, total beaches. I mean, the, around the whole place, and then the center of the country has some mountains, and it has a lot of flat area in the upper part of. The, now, um, Sarong uh, gave me a correction here because I'm talking about how, how easy. I mean, you can grow anything. It's amazing what you can grow in Costa Rica. But a little bit of common sense, okay? Because, you know, she says, hey, not all things will grow in all areas right. since there's so many different climates. Yes, yeah. you are right about that. And, you know, uh, growing in the United States is a lot easier than growing in Costa Rica. And that's because you learn how to do that because there's like three or four months of growing season. And in Costa Rica, well, you can grow 365 days out of the year. However, during the rainy season, you got to learn, okay, it grows differently in the rainy season. you got to put up all of this plastic because it rains so hard, it'll beat down the, the small plants. Mm -hmm. So you learn a different way to grow. And the sun all, yeah. is so intense the here sun is, because yeah, you're closer well, to the equator. Eat, so that's what's great about I'm excited to share real soon about the off-grid homestead and how we start building there and we start learning how to plant in Costa Rica, start learning how to build in Costa Rica, start learning how to share all of that amazing stuff with you. You know, as on our channels, we talk about, you know, building an off-grid homestead and, you know, it's exciting because I enjoy the challenge of living off-grid, being self-sufficient. Uh, you know, uh, being able to live off the land. When I was a kid, I would go into the woods for three or four days. The only thing I'd bring is salt and pepper and a 22, and I'd live off the land. And I had brought the salt and pepper just to make it taste a little better. Sometimes I ate nothing. Sometimes I ate a bird. Sometimes I ate a squirrel. Sometimes I didn't eat nothing, you know. But, you know, now, you know, I'm not big into hunting, and now I'm plant-based, uh, but uh, not because I don't like meat. I love meat. Nobody makes a better hamburger than me. R right now, nobody mm -hmm. makes a better veggie burger than me. Woohoo! Right I'm up for the challenge if you can prove me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but so. um, like Saran was saying, you know, uh, when you reach the high altitudes here, it, get up into the mountains, there are <clears throat> some trees that don't grow. You know, yeah. you can get, um, there's part of the road by that restaurant that's, I forget what the altitude is, but 
there's hardly any trees growing up there. Yeah. It, it, the altitudes do make a huge difference because um, whenever, um, you know, it's like, I, I love these mamones. And I don't know if you know what a mamone, mamone is, but, but a mamone's a red fruit. It looks like a little alien with all kind of little tentacles. Great, you know, and you pop them babies open. It's like a great big old jelly. Great. But they don't grow in the higher altitudes. Now, let me correct that. They do grow, but they just don't produce as much fruit. Mm -hmm. So you can grow almost anything, but it may or may not produce fruit at the higher altitudes. Those things produce great fruit where it's hot. So you got to learn. It's any kind of gardening. You got to learn what will grow in that climate. And if it doesn't grow, grow well in that climate, what do you do? You put up a hot house. Put up a hot house. You create your own environment. You know, when I was in the United States, I used to own a nursery. So I've grown thousands of plants, okay? And I've got experience with that. And you've got to learn how to manipulate the soil, manipulate uh, the environment. And if you do that, you can grow anything that you want, mm -hmm. okay? Okay, so, uh, hey, lots of great stuff. Oh, check out Dean. Dean says, challenge accepted for the <laughs> veggie burger. You go, Dean. You go, Dean. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, uh, fantastic. Okay. Oh, look, Tico, uh, Tico soon says, can one receiver over the air digital TV channels? And, uh, hey, uh, I, I'm not sure exactly what you're saying, but look, uh, you know, they, they get digital everybody's channels got all, over the all over the place. Yeah, everybody's got dishes on their house and they're getting things, okay? And, uh, oh, Teresa said, what are your thoughts on Hako? And I meant to see that. She made a correction when I said Wava. I didn't. Hako. And she says she's coming down to Hako. Look, Hako is a very, very, very marketed area. It is a nice area and there's areas outside Hako you can live. But you want to keep in mind, Hako has lots of tourists. Because it has lots of tourists, it also has more crime okay hako does have a lot of prostitutes it's well known for prostitutes well known for the sex industry okay prostitution is legal pimping is not pimping is not legal because it is sex trafficking but if a woman wants to uh sell herself into prostitute it's legal okay and that causes a problem and causes more crime you will find drugs there hey Good old common sense can avoid any kind of issue, okay? So if you want to live in the Hako area and living on the outskirts, don't be out at, at 2 o'clock in the morning, you know, where the crime is going to be at. Right. So Hako is a wonderful place, lots of great places on the outskirts of Hako. Nothing wrong with it at all, but it is going to be more expensive in Hako. A lot of tourists, a lot of gringos, prices are always a little higher, okay? The crime is, we heard a lot of crime happen to gringos in uh, the Hako area at night, you know, like uh, in the porty scene, in the, the boars and stuff. So especially those that get drunk, you know, really not, they're not alert, they're not watching their surroundings, um, they get taken advantage of. Yeah. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with Hako, but uh, for me, I don't know that I would want to live in Hako because there's, there's just too, too many places that I could live and you could get property way cheaper. Yeah. And the uh, beach I find is, is very nice, but it's no nicer than, than uh, any of the, any others. the others. But, but here's the thing about Hako. If you are a person that enjoys the nightlife, Hako is the place for you. If you enjoy nightlife, Puerto Viejo is the place for you. If you enjoy the nightlife, San Jose, okay? I'm not a nightlife person. Um, yeah. I'm a daylife person, man. <laughs> I enjoy the nature and the mountains and the waterfalls and the trails, that's me. Yeah, and Hako has a lot of, um, like uh, the, the Hako Walk, it's very pretty. They have a lot of restaurants. So it's a nice place. It's just, I would yeah. be, definitely be careful yeah. at night. Dean asked a real good question. It says, one last question for today. Do I need a residential address in Costa Rica to start my temporary residency application? Yes, you will, but you can actually use your attorney's address. Okay, so you can put like your attorney. A proxy. Yeah, you know, you can use your attorney's address for your address. We have, you know, no problem. Okay, so you can start that process by using your attorney's address. That's what we've done. Okay, okay. Common sense is a must, and that will help you uh, tremendously. Yeah. Okay. Everything from walking down the street, you know, we see sidewalks that have big gaping holes in them or pieces of uh, metal sticking up, you know, and we, we look at it like that would never pass in the U.S. because somebody would sue. Um, but here it's kind of like, just use your common sense, watch where you're going, you know, don't, yeah. so. Yeah, and now, now Kelvin, 
says, uh, hey, the only thing that I must have is I need NFL football starting in September. Not sure about the Brady crap, LOLs. <laughs> a little bit of friendly banter there. You know, hey, I don't like football at all, so I hope y'all can all have it, okay? So anyway. Yeah, and uh, you can watch stuff online. Yeah, you, you can um, watch stuff online. I don't know how that works, like if you're able to have a subscription. I know we have a Netflix subscription. Um, and we were able to watch it here. And if we wanted to to watch it, uh, see the movies that are offered in the U.S., then we can use our, what's that thing called where it um, changes your IP address? Yeah, use a VPN. You always yeah. want to use a VPN in Costa Rica. It's huge, you know. Yeah, so, uh, because anyway. there is a difference. When we don't use the VPN, we're considered being in Costa Rica. And um, they show us movies that are in Spanish and, you know, and not... Some movies that are not available here or available in the U.S. Yeah. So sometimes when we hear about a good movie that's not available here, we'll put the VPN yeah. on so we can watch it. Now, William asked a good question and says, uh, so based on your assessment of Hako, is then a good place to invest in a condo for renting out as it's close to San Jose and also serve as locals mm -hmm. too? Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you've got money to invest... Getting a condo in Hako, getting any kind of rental places anywhere around tourist areas, you can make some seriously good money with Airbnbs. Obviously, you're going to have to pay a TCO to maybe kind of help manage it or a real estate company to help manage it. But man, uh, if you've got money to invest, yeah, you can make some serious money in Costa Rica with condos to rent out. You know, so yeah, that's great, you great, got great money deal. Money to invest for that, yeah, and um, the. The touristy part of Hako is mostly just this one strip. I mean, it's like this main road that passes right through town and all the hotels, all of the, um, the restaurants, the little shops, all those things are right off on that strip or one or two blocks off of that strip. There's a whole area of communities on the outskirts of, of the strip that are residential and are nice. And, yeah. you know, like they're, they're not, um, they're not, touristy <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah so uh, uh you know um hey uh let me take a look here we've been going 110 minutes and i said i wasn't going to do two hours today and i've already have i just have way too much fun doing this so anyway uh creative says well how good is your spanish since y'all been in costa rica for some years now and you know we've been here for a very long time and i hate to admit that our spanish is not that great it is embarrassing we are learning all the time but hey, I'm glad you said that because I'm, I'm going to tell you a story here. The, here's my excuse. Any excuse is good as good as the other. But I love what I do. I love working on the internet. Um, I enjoy my job and I work all the time. I probably work more than 95% of the Americans or the world, okay? I love being on my computer, but because I'm on my computer, I just bought these glasses. I'm going to put these people in the recommended businesses uh, selection. My eyeballs are very, very good. Matter of fact, Rebecca, whenever I married her or whenever I uh, asked her to marry me, anyway, I can't believe it. She said, yeah. Can you believe that? Anyway, she said, yeah. I bought her this diamond, and we went there to the store, and the guy's looking at it, you know, with his thing like that, and he's looking at that diamond. And I'm like, what you looking at? He said, every diamond's got its own number, and they got to record that. I said, oh, I wonder if I can see. Oh, you'll never be able to see it. Way too small. I said, well, let me see. And I actually look at that diamond, and my eyes are so good. I knew my eyes were good. I could actually read the number on that diamond, okay? He was impressed. Beyond, I was impressed. Heck. Anyway, I've been on the computer so much. Computers are bad for you, and uh, they, I, I don't see as good uh, but um, well, it's, it's the UV, it's the, the yeah, light, it's the that damage comes. that comes from that. Yeah. And these glasses here, uh, even though it has a very tiny prescription to help me in small fine print, it protects all of that glare that comes from the computers and really helps. So I now have a brand new pair of glasses, and uh, they also serve as sunglasses. Oh man, this is awesome! Anyway, uh, I'm gonna put them in the uh, uh, forum because really, if you are on the computer and you need a good pair of glasses to protect your eyes, you should definitely get a pair of those, okay? Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's my excuse is why my Spanish is bad, but I am learning more and more, and we're trying Wait, to learn more and more. Wait, what was your excuse? My excuse is I work too much. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca, I mean, she's a slave driver. She's got that whip. She's like, pow, get back to work, boy. I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> anyway, okay. Hey, um. 
All right, and I think that's it. Hey, we should probably call it quits. It's almost two hours. If there's anything that you just uh, got to know and I didn't answer that question, hey, uh, and you know what, guys? We do stay busy a lot, um, and, uh, you know, a yeah, lot of times we... have we, regular jobs in addition to the <laughs> You know, YouTube I, I took on a big job by creating a YouTube channel, but I do have fun doing it, okay? And, you know, uh, we do meet up with people sometimes, and when they come, uh, we stay very, very busy. Sometimes we don't get the opportunity to do that. We do enjoy meeting people, but unfortunately, we can't meet everybody. But being in the forum, it was kind of like being able to chat with you all the time, and we greatly appreciate it. Uh, and, you know, you know, supporting us in the forum is a great way to, to show how you appreciate what we do for you, and it helps offset the cost of what we do. Uh, but whether you give or not just does not matter. No, it's uh, just appreciated, it, but it's we certainly just not really, really do appreciate expected it. or required. Yeah, it's not expected, anything. not required. But anytime you donate by hitting that dollar sign, anytime that you uh, join the you know premium members, you know, we we just appreciate you. We really, really, really yeah. do. Thank you so, very much. Hey, uh, and just the support, watching us and talking, um, talking back, well, chatting back and forth. Yeah, that's you know, awesome. Thank y'all so much. It gives us it a sure chance to learn as well. You know, that's like Sarong. She's been here. You know, we learn from Doug. Doug's on here a whole lot. We learn from one another, mm -hmm. and you know, uh, that's something that's so important. You get enough people together learning from each other. There's not a single thing you cannot accomplish, and that's what's amazing. Yeah. Which, Everyone, by the way, glad for the reminder. Hey, please hit that like like button hit that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed it does make a huge huge difference and that's one way that you can support us and it doesn't cost you anything but two seconds hit the subscribe button yeah. hit that like button go back to every single video hit like 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 you know it makes a big big difference it really really does okay so hey we greatly appreciate you hit that like button uh, hit that subscribe button we greatly appreciate all of you uh, we don't do a live every Sunday, uh, but, you know, hey, I enjoy having lives. I enjoy sharing back and forth with you guys, uh, and uh, it's just fun. So, hey, we're going to see you next week. Any last-minute things? Any last-minute things, Rebecca? No, not that I can think of. <laughs> all right. Hey, I've enjoyed speaking with all of you. You've been wonderful. We really appreciate you. We look forward to seeing you. And, hey, if nothing else, you're definitely going to see us in our next video, and hopefully we're going to do another live real soon. This week, I'm working hard on finding a solution for our internet so we can get out there to our off-grid homestead. So we'll see you again next time. Ciao. We'll see you. Ciao. <laughs>